Okay, today we're going to take a look at the fundamental counting principle. We'll do a couple examples with it and then even tie in a little bit of probability. Uh, so basically what this fundamental counting principle states is that if there are m ways that one event can occur and n ways that another event can occur, then, then there are n times n ways that both of those events can occur. So basically what we're going to be doing is a lot of multiplication and taking a look at uh, the conditions given in the problem. So for this first example here, we've got Anne is choosing a password for her access to the internet. She decides not to use the digit 0 or the letter O. Each letter or number may be used more than once. How many passwords of two letters followed by four digits are possible? All right, now there's some key things in here that are important. Okay, she's decided not to use the digit zero or the letter O. And it says in here that each letter or number may be used more than once. Okay, so that's going to be crucial. <clears throat> now our overall password has two letters in it and it has four digits. So um, what I like to do first is I like to set that up um, showing exactly how many letters, how many digits we're going to have. Okay, so then I'm going to have two letters. So there's going to be a letter. All right, and then I have another letter. Then I'm going to have four digits. Okay, so each one of these are a digit. All right, now our fundamental um, counting principle says that we're going to multiply. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many possibilities we have for this, this first letter, how many we have for the second letter, how many we have for then each of the digits, and then we're going to multiply these all up. All right, so there's us using that principle that says we can multiply this all up. All right, now, in general, letters, how many letters are in the alphabet? There's 26, but she is going to omit the... O. So that means there's really only 25 possible letters that she can choose for her first one. All right. Now, because they can be used more than once, all right, that means then when she picks her second letter, she still is choosing from that original 25 set of letters. So she's got 25 letters that she can choose from there. All right. Now, for the digits, there are 10 digits, 0 through 9. Okay, but she is not going to use the digit zero, so that means that there's only nine possibilities that she can choose from for that first digit. All right, and then for each of the digits that followed, since they may be used more than once, she still has another nine digits to choose from, and another nine digits to choose from, and another nine digits to choose from there. All right, so basically all you have to do is use this fundamental counting principle and get a calculator out and multiply 25 times 25 times 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 all right and that turns out to be 4,100,625 so that's how many different possible passwords that she could generate under these given conditions okay now let's take a look at a second example all right, in this second example, we've got a license plate consists of two letters followed by three digits. The letters A through Z and the numbers 0 through 9 can be repeated. How many different license plates are possible? All right, so again, I'm going to set this up based on the conditions of the story problem. I've got two letters and I've got three digits. So then there's going to be my two letters. and then followed by three digits. Okay, now in this particular problem, we are not omitting any of the letters and we're not omitting any of the numbers. So that means of the alphabet, I've got 26 different possibilities for my first letter. All right, and then um, it says they can be repeated. So that's always important part. So that means that my second letter, I still have those 26 letters to choose from. All right, on my digits, I have 10 digits, and I'm choosing three times, and they can be repeated. So I would have 10 to choose from the first time. I would still have 10 to choose from the first time, and then I would have another 10 to choose from. OK, 
okay and then I would get my calculator out and I would multiply this and that would give me a total of 676,000 all right so how many different possible license plates are there there's 676,000 different license plates to choose from all right now let's um, add an extra part to this question what then if it said followed by it said something like find the probability that your new license plate contains the initials of your first and last name first and last names uh, and let's say in their proper order so in other words your first initial first and then your last names initial second all right so now we're going to tie this into probability all right now i know how many possible li license plates there are now i just have to find the number of outcomes that could happen with the first um, letter being the initial to my first name and the second letter being the initial to my last name all right so i'm still going to do that um, same concept here because i have a letter and a letter and then followed by three digits so I'm still going to set up the exact same way okay but when I look at this I've got 26 letters in the alphabet but my first name only has starts with one letter so out of those 26 to choose from I only have one possibility that could occur for that first letter All right. Now, for the second letter, I want it to be the first letter of my last name, okay? So again, of those 26 letters, I only have one letter that starts with my last name, so times one there. Now, the digits in this is not being affected whatsoever. There's 10 digits to choose from, and I would have 10 to choose from on each one of these. Okay, so then you would multiply that out, 10 times 10 times 10, and that's going to be 1,000. Okay, now I've got, this is the number of outcomes of the particular event, and this is the total outcome. So if I'm doing a probability, all right, so then the probability of this event, let's just say A there, is 1,000 over the 676,000 all right and then do a little bit of math there cross out your zeros then that's going to be 1 and 676 and as a decimal I think that turns out to be like 0 0.0015 which is about 0.15 percent so there is a 0.15 percent chance that when I get my new license plate that my first name and last name initials will be the first two letters in my license plate. All right, now, um, as opposed to doing an entire another example here, um, the one main thing that I would like to point out, if we kind of take this top half, all right, and then just kind of relook at this a little bit, both examples I did said that the letters and digits could be repeated. All right, now, it, oftentimes they will say cannot be repeated. All right, if it's cannot be repeated, cannot be repeated, all right, then all that all changes. The only thing that changes is what you've got to choose from is what you're going across. The first time, you would have 26 letters to choose from. But if I said that n the letters could not be repeated, well, I've used one of them in the first one, so that one throw I have to throw that one out. I would only have 25 then to choose from on my second one. All right, if my numbers could not be repeated, I would have 10 digits to choose from on the first one. All right, but then I used one, so then I would only have nine to choose from on the next one. And then because that one was used, then I would only have eight 
to choose from. All right, so that's the difference between can be repeated and cannot be repeated. When, when they tell you that whatever you're choosing, whatever your event is, cannot be repeated, you decrease each one of them by one. Okay, so without doing an entire another example, that just kind of covers that really quick. All right, um, definitely thanks for watching. A um, little nice short um, video on the fundamental counting principle. Uh, be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.